June 10th, 2019, Game 5, Raptors vs. Warriors, a day that would change Kevin Durant's career forever, as in this game early in the second quarter, he would go down with an Achilles injury. And this injury was a lingering problem that actually started in Game 5 vs. Houston that would have him miss a handful of games leading up to the NBA Finals. And this injury was so devastating for so many reasons. First off, it single-handedly changed the winner of the 2019 Finals, and more importantly, it altered Kevin Durant's career and possibly his free agent decision. Now, as you guys know, KD would end up going to the Brooklyn Nets, and through the entire 2020 season, he would spend it rehabbing, getting stronger, and getting better. And there was actually some workout videos that leaked of how good KD was, and in those videos, he looked kind of slim, kind of slender, and that led a lot of people to ask, will Kevin Durant ever be back to his 2019 or 2014 MVP form? And in case you guys forgot how good KD was playing before that injury, he was on pace to become the first player in NBA history to average 35-5-5 on 50-4-90 splits in a playoff run. So quite frankly, he was playing his best basketball of his career and it was cut short due to injury. Now, what makes the Achilles injury so devastating is that in NBA history, there's only really been one guy who's came back and resembled himself before the injury, and that is Dominique Wilkins. All the other players who had this injury, they came back and they just were not quite the same. So, in a lot of people's minds, it was to me very difficult for Kevin Durant to come back and reestablish himself as one of the best players in the world. Now, fast forward to the 2021 season, Kevin Durant has missed a full year rehabbing, getting better, and now he's back in the NBA and he's come out on fire to start this year, and he's averaging around 30 points per game, 7 boards, 5 assists, on ridiculous shooting splits. And we're roughly a quarter of the way in the season, and I think I can confidently say that Kevin Durant is back to his old self. Now, that leads me to my next question. Is Kevin Durant in 2021 actually better than he was his MVP year in 2014 and even during his 2019 playoff run? Now, there's two ways you could answer this question. You could use the eye test, go back, watch the film, and compare it to KD now. You could also go the stats route and look at the numbers. So, first up, I want to look at the eye test, compare KD now versus KD of the past. So when it comes to 2021 looking at Kevin Durant, you can obviously tell that he's still an elite scorer and he can give it to you at all three levels. He's still a great three-point shooter, a great mid-range shooter, he's great operating out of the post, and he's really an underrated finisher at the rim and around the basket. Now a couple of things that I think he's improved on this year in a short sample size, I think his handles are actually better than they were ever in Golden State as well as Oklahoma City. I think his ability to know how to get his shots and just his IQ of when to pick his spots and choose, that's better than it's ever been. And KD has always been an effortless scorer, but watching it in Brooklyn, I don't know if it's the new era, the new high paced scoring, but it's looking easier than ever for Kevin Durant to get 30, 35, even 40 points per game on a nightly basis. And like I said, the IQ factor, I think KD's basketball IQ is higher than it's ever been. In Golden State, I think he learned a lot of things about how to pick his spots, how to be a great team player. And going along with being a great team player, his passing and his playmaking ability, it's better than I've ever seen it. He's making some great, great passes. I was watching the Heat game. He had a great dime to Joe Harris that 2014 KD probably couldn't have made. Now, that's not saying 2014 KD wasn't a good passer. I just think this Kevin Durant, he knows the game so much better He's seven years older and he has such more playoff experience and just a championship mentality. He knows how to get his teammates involved and playing with Steph, Clay, and Draymond, you're gonna naturally do that when playing with those guys. And I think that unselfish ability and the playmaking skills he got in Golden State, that has translated tremendously to this Brooklyn Nets team. Also, Katie's defensive ability, I think right now he is the best defender on the Brooklyn Nets. That's not saying much considering the Nets are possibly the worst defensive team in the NBA. And since the James Harden trade, they have the worst defensive rating in NBA history, and they're the worst team defensively in the NBA. But just watching KD's individual defense, I think it's on par with Golden State KD. His length, his speed, his defensive IQ, those things have not fallen off. If anything, they've gotten better. And I think defensively, he's going to have to be a big-time defender for this Nets team. He's already guarding one through five on a nightly basis, 
something that he really was never asked to do. So can he carry that load for 82 games plus the playoffs? We'll have to see. But right now, KD, from what I can tell, is as good defensively as he's ever been. And one thing a lot of people question KD coming off an Achilles injury is his speed and his overall first step and just his overall ability to get to the basket. And watching the games, I watch a lot of Brooklyn Nets basketball. I have not seen Kevin Durant slow down one bit. His handles, like I said, are much improved. His crossover is one of the best in the league. And his length and his overall frame, it helps him tremendously of getting to the basket. And he's always been a very smooth, very silky player. And he's still at same Kevin Durant in 2021. Now, has he gotten better at those things, finishing the basket? It is kind of early in the year to tell. But watching him play, he still has those same Kevin Durant moves and that same Kevin Durant burst and first step. Now, if you want to look at this from a stats angle and look at the numbers, KD's scoring ability, he's averaging around 30 points per game. I believe that's second in the NBA to Bradley Beal. So he hasn't lost his step scoring wise. But the thing that's really impressed me is his dominance from everywhere on the court. And on your screen, you can see Kevin Durant shooting splits from different areas on the court. From five to nine feet, he's 47%. 10 to 14 feet, 53%, 51.1%, 42.9%, and 43.4%. So he's dominant from everywhere on the court, a lethal scoring machine. He's not lost his step when it comes to shooting, and his scoring ability everywhere on the court is somehow actually better than it was pre-injury. Now, if you look at the different shot areas where Katie's been shooting, in the restricted area, he's shooting 72%, in the paint, 47%, Mid-range, 50%. Left corner threes, 33%. Right corner threes, 80%. Above the break threes, 43.2%. So once again, dominant from every area on the court and the best three-level score in the NBA and possibly in NBA history. Now, one of the coolest things you can look at is the different type of shots that KD is shooting. On his pull-up jump shots, he's shooting 48.5%. On jump shots in general, he's shooting 44.9%. On fadeaway jump shots, he's shooting 60%. On step back jump shots, he's shooting 80%. On turnaround fadeaways, he's shooting 50%. And on turnaround jump shots, he's shooting 60%. So once again, the full arsenal is on display and you really can't say anything else about how great a score KD has been this season. Now, if you really want to look at a stats on approach of KD now versus KD of the past, it's a pretty interesting comparison. I think you obviously have to adjust for eras Comparing 2014 to 2021 may not seem like a long time, but the game has evolved and offense has become the centerpiece of every NBA team, and the pace of play, the scoring, is 100% up. It's a different game in general. So to evaluate for that pace and that change of game, look at the per 100 stats, and comparing these stats-wise, it's pretty even. 2014 KD averaged 42-9-7 on really, really good splits. 2021 KD average 49 and 7 on also very good splits. Now I will preface this by saying we've only seen KD in Brooklyn for a handful of games, 20 to 25 games, so all these numbers could change the end, but right now I have no indication that will change, so I think this comparison is a valid comparison, and I think it shows just how good KD is comparing him in Brooklyn to him in Oklahoma City. Now if you compare KD in Brooklyn to his three years in Golden State, Brooklyn KD is actually better stats-wise, but I think it is a really hard comparison to make considering KD was playing with three other really great players in Steph, Clay, and Draymond, and his numbers may have been down due to that and having to share the ball with three great teammates. But stats-wise, Brooklyn KD is on par with Golden State KD as well as Oklahoma City MVP KD. Now, recently I've been getting a lot of questions, do I think KD is the best player in the world? And that's a tough question to answer. As for me, the best player in the world title, you have to earn that during the playoffs. But during these first few 20 to 25 games, Kevin Durant, in my opinion, has looked like the best player in the world. It's hard to find a weakness in his game. A great scorer, a great passer, a great rebounder. He scores from all levels. He's very efficient. He can shoot free throws. And he's really good in the clutch. The only critique I could see being maybe valid is him not being the greatest leader in the world. But then again, it's hard to evaluate who is the best leader as we're not there in the locker rooms evaluating Kevin Durant on a daily basis and we have no idea what's going on in those Brooklyn huddles and that Brooklyn locker room. 
And I think if this Brooklyn team is lucky enough to get their defense in order and somehow make the NBA Finals and possibly beat whoever comes out of the West, Kevin Durant, he will be crowned the best player in the world. And I don't think there'll be a lot of objections from all of the NBA fans. So my final verdict on if Kevin Durant is better now than he was in the past, I think actually Kevin Durant, he is better than he was in Oklahoma City as well as Golden State. And I hope this video quickly explained why I think that. The eye test and the numbers, they seem to back that up pretty substantially. But then again, let me know your guys' opinion. Is Kevin Durant better now than he was pre-injury? Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.